The Oblong Box. A few years ago, I took a trip to New York City in an independence packet ship. We were to sail on the 15th of June, but I went on the 14th to arrange some luggage matters. There were many passengers, more ladies than men. In the list, I found that a very good friend of mine, Mr. Cornelius Wyatt, an artist, was going to be on the ship too. He had a good heart and was ordinary temperament of genius. He had separated three rooms, one for his wife and him, one for his two sisters, and the last one for his servant. But the name of his servant was overscored. Then there was one empty room left. Oh, extra luggage, what a fool. I thought, maybe they are taking an important painting. I knew his two sisters, but I have never met his wife. He described her as a very beautiful woman. On the 14th, when I visited the ship to leave my luggage, I was waiting for Mrs. Wyatt to arrive. But the captain told me, Mrs. Wyatt could not come, but she will come tomorrow at the same sailing hour. When I went back to the hotel, I met someone, the captain, and he said, We are not going to sail tomorrow, owing to circumstances that I cannot tell you. I will call you the day before we sail. He did not call me until almost a week later, but when he did, I immediately went on board. It's, it's crowded. Wyatt's party arrived ten minutes later. Two sisters, the bride and himself. He did not even introduce his wife. She had a veil, but when she took it off, she was nothing like Wyatt described her. Hi, Mrs. Wyatt. It's a pleasure to meet you. Then they passed into the room. My curiosity came back. There was no servant. Oh, I will look for the extra baggage. I immediately find a big of long box. Inside, there must be a copy of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Dapper. One thing annoyed me. The box did not go to the extra room. It went to Wyatt's room. On the top of the box, there was written that the box was for Mrs. Adelaide Curtis in Albany, New York. I know that Adelaide Curtis was the wife's mother, so the painting was a gift for her. For the next four days, we had a good weather. Although the wind was dead ahead, we had lost sight of the coast. The passengers were happy, except for Wyatt and his sisters, who behaved weird. Mr. Wyatt seemed very eccentric, and his sisters too. They did not talk to anyone. Mrs. Wyatt herself was chatty and not in a good way. My husband, Mr. Wyatt, has many horses, and we travel a lot. <laughs> She always looked like she was flirting with men. People made fun of her. <laughs> <laughs> she does not realize they are laughing at her and not with her. I thought out loud. She always referred to her husband as Mr. Wyatt, not as Cornelius. It was weird. One day, I met Wyatt upon the deck. Hi, Cornelius. What is on the blonde box? He did not say anything. Come on, Wyatt. It's not like you're carrying a dead body in there. He stared at me and started laughing like a freak. <laughs> and then he fainted. He looked like a dead body. The assistants took him to his room. After that episode, during two wakeful nights, not consecutive, I saw Mrs. Wyatt leaving the room in which Cornelius was and then coming back at daybreak. I get to the conclusion that they were getting a divorce. During those two nights, I also heard weird sounds coming from Wyatt's room. They were occasionated by Wyatt himself. He was opening the oblong box. When he finally opened it, I heard him crying. We had been at the sea for seven days, when then came a heavy blow. that turned into a hurricane. The captain said to the passengers, We are going to have to leave the ship. Forty people go in one boat. Everybody had already left to the ship, but there was only left 14 passengers with the captain and me. We all had to fit in the jolly boat, a very small boat that would sink if we moved. It contained, when afloat, 
the captain and his wife, Mr. Wyatt and his family, a Mexican officer, his wife, four children, and myself with a Negro valet. We had no room and we had some provisions. Mr. Wyatt stood with the purpose of taking in his oblong box. We told him to, hit, to sit down, but he sprang from the boat, swam to the ship, and carried his oblong box. When he jumped into the water again, he sank. We saw him disappear, and I said to the captain, Did you see how suddenly they sank? The captain responded me, They will soon rise again when the salt melts. The salt? I said, Hush! The captain said, pointing to the wife and sisters of the deceased. We arrived to Roanoke Island, and we stayed there for a week. A month later, I met Captain Hardy in Broadway. We ended up talking about poor Wyatt. He said, His wife indeed was a very beautiful woman. On the morning of the 14th, she suddenly sickened and died. It was necessary to take the course, but we could not tell anybody because because the passengers will have a bond the ship rather than take a trip with a dead body. So the Captain Hardy arranged the corpse could pass as mer merchandise. But the, to keep appearances, they needed someone to impersonate the wife. So the maid agreed to do it. The extra room was indeed for the maid. So at night she slept there and in day she performed the wife. My mistake was to be too curious. Sometimes in the night I still hear that hysterical laugh.